Viewers, I'm delighted to welcome Ratul Chakravarti, the curator of a very interesting anthology, Shared Roots, Tales from the Indosphere. He is a passionate storyteller and this particular book that we are going to be discussing today explores the deep historical and cultural connections between India and Cambodia. So Shared Roots is not just a collection of stories, if I may just add, but it also weaves together the narratives of two civilizations that flourished in close proximity and it features contributions from seven diverse authors, each bringing their own unique perspectives. It talks, it also talks about the majestic grandeur of Angkor uh, Wat, among other places, and invites readers to rediscover the beauty of cultural exchange untamed by colonial narratives. So join me uh, in welcoming Ratul Chakrabarti. Thank you so much for uh, having this discussion with us. Thank you, Hinaji. Thank you for having me here. Uh, Ratul, I want to begin this conversation by asking you what was the motivation, what was the inspiration uh, in you behind curating such a beautiful book, Shared Roots, and how do you hope that the readers uh, will learn from it? What can they gain from it? So, um, I, uh, I, uh, th there's a story behind how I ended up curating uh, this book. Uh, this book is a part of the uh, the uh, Indic Academy Anthology Collections. So, Indic Academy, for those of you who might not know, is one of the institutions at the form at the forefront of you know the current Indian uh, uh, Indic cultural re uh, revival. So, Harikiran Garu, the founder of Indic Academy, uh, one day calls me up and says, "Ratul, I have this idea." and we want to do something between india and cambodia and uh, you know it's it, it, it's something that uh, i want to curate and to be honest initially i was not very taken with the idea i was like uh, okay I, he is not somebody i can ever say no he has you know yes. helped me a lot over the years um so i said hurricane garu uh, give me a, a couple of days let me study and uh, get back to you and I had no not, no idea about uh, any of the stuff uh, between you know I, I had some vague uh, you know like like everybody else I had some vague idea that okay there are some temples there my wife had visited and she had told me that it's it's a, it's, it's a magical place so I said okay let me study and read a bit so once I started reading my eyes actually opened I said like okay like this is uh, this is an incredible uh, this, this is an incredible tale. Uh, in the fact that we have so much of you know common historical cultural religious economic uh, uh, connections that uh, nobody seems to uh, you know realize these days or, or we have just taken it or we have so much taken it for granted that we have actually forgotten it so once i started reading once i read some of the inscriptions that are there in sanskritam uh, in the cambodian temples i said okay this is something that it would be my privilege to be a part of something like this so we said that okay let's go ahead and do this and for me the the purpose of this book is that the you know the understanding that i received while i researched about the, these the, this ancient historical and cultural uh, connections I want that understanding, uh, the readers to actually have that understanding, readers to have that understanding of that, yes, this grand thing called the Indosphere, which we probably would talk uh, a bit later in the, you know, uh, when the time comes up, I'll, I'll explain what that means. This, this grand place where there was this immense diversity, but there was this shared uh, cultural, economic and uh, religious bedrock and a sphere of prosperity that existed uh, before the colonial times, before the in industrial times. And it is like we are the inheritors of that legacy. And I want anybody who is reading this book to come up with that understanding so that so that they they also might get interested and, uh, you know, uh, realize like how uh, how fortunate and privileged we are that we are a part of this uh, this continuum that has existed for the last, you know, 2,500-3,000 years. So, Ratul, uh, you know, uh, your journey started with you searching on Google about Cambodia, writing this word Cambodia, uh, Cambodia. I read about this in your prologue of the yeah. book. 
and it has come a long way now you have this full fledged book which talks about the historical and cultural significance of the ties between india and cambodia tell us a little bit about with the help of these stories by individual contributing authors they bring the unique perspectives and the second chapter especially it is like a travel log like you said that your wife went there and similarly the author went there and you know realized that all of this knowledge and all of this is there and needs to you know come back and write about it how does these stories uh, actually manifest uh, in the book and tells this idea of indosphere yeah so uh, once we decided to do this book we uh, you know we we we, we had a call for uh, submissions and we we gave uh, folks some time and uh, we announced that okay we were, we are doing this anthology and anybody who would want to write uh, please send your submissions to us and we got a lot of submissions it was a really difficult job for me to kind of select all of these um yeah to 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 actually find out like okay what makes sense for the anthology and from the very beginning i had this uh, idea that it should not be monotonous so each of the stories in the anthology or each of the you know each of the pieces uh, of the anthology needs to fit in a larger puzzle where you know the reading experience is sometimes that okay i'm reading a story then then you have something like a travel log then you have something which is set in a different era and one of the things that you will understand is that uh, any reader who will read through is uh, will understand that the perspectives that are coming they're coming because the people who have written it are coming from very very diverse backgrounds we have somebody who is a student we have somebody who is a housewife we have somebody who is working in uh, you know leading companies it's it, it's it's very very diverse and i wanted to have that sense of you know uh, th- th- that that sense that okay the diversity of this indosphere needs to be captured by this diversity of the viewpoints so that it 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 is it comes across as something that it's like a multifaceted thing it's it's not like we are only harping on history 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 or it's not like we are only harping on travel 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 no it has to be history it has to be culture it has to be our economic strength it has to be the folk tales that uh, that are present uh, which uh, uh, which have you know whose roots whose kernels are the same but they have uh, changed in telling it has to be ramayan which is present in both our countries and form uh, you know a, 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 and form one of the strongest connects that we have culturally with the, that 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 current india and cambodia has uh, ha, have between them so all of these needs to kind of come through and that is what we have tried that is like every story is supposed to uh, you know Uh, it's uh, uh, if the, the the objective behind every story is to highlight this this particular facets of our shared cultural uh, cultural uh, consciousness and whether we have succeeded or not that the readers will only be able to tell but from our side that is the that is we the we can object. just you know touch upon briefly uh, on this idea of revitalization of indosphere Uh, for our viewers if you can just let us know what is this idea which you talks about in the prologue and then uh, in the subsequent yes. stories so indosphere is a is a linguistic term um uh, initially it was coined as a region where the indian languages were spoken and then people understood that uh, it's not just languages but the culture uh the the cultural bedrock of these regions are the same and it's a vast region you know it it it, it goes from uh, you know beyond the borders of afghanistan to all the way across southeast asia and beyond and what is fascinating is that um the the essence of indosphere is based upon the typically bharatiya way of looking at uh you know how how we look at life so we uh, uh, uh we look at life as four goals as dharma artha kama and moksha um dharma is righteousness kama is desire um artha is prosperity and moksha is you know spiritual liberation whenever wherever indian civilization spread it spread along all of these four axes 
it was never currently we are in the i, I just just uh, currently we are we are in the mistaken belief that whenever two cultures come in contact it's always a power contest and one culture will subsume and consume the other culture and dominate it and that is the most you know the most barbaric form of that is probably what we call colonization which you know almost every country in this continuum uh, suffered from Indosphere is unique in the history of the world in that it is where cultures came in contact and one culture did not eat another culture one culture did not consume another culture instead we celebrated diversity we created this common bedrock of uh, dharma artha kama and moksha uh, which is economic religious cultural and spiritual tra traditions but within that common bedrock in every corner of indosphere local uh, inspirations and local creativity interfaced with them and created newer uh, civilizational uh, you know uh, newer civilizational uh, paintings basically newer civilization expressions so what we have here is an area of immense diversity this diversity is present if you go from district to district in india you know and if you, if you go across, if you look at the expanse of uh, you know the what we call the indosphere across southeast asia you will see this diversity everywhere but when you dig down deeper from the diversity whether it is uh, from the buddhist traditions or the hindu traditions you will find that there is this common bedrock of respect of mutual understanding of coexistence and of co prosperity this is something that we had forgotten our eyes are gazed towards you know towards west and uh, we think that okay everything that is happening that everything important that has happened or that is happening is going to be triggered from there and we have forgotten what we have this this family that we have in our own neighborhood and this is what when when, when we talk about revival it is not about it, it's not just about uh, it, 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 you know having some shared place or something like that it is uh, at a much fundamental level which is the bharati away that at all of these four axes we reignite our bonds we you know we pour down you know you, 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 you reinvigorate uh, our shared roots so as to, so that we know that we are not alone our civilization is not alone and our civilization unlike a lot of you know depictions that have happened in the post colonial period it was not a narrow civilization it was a very wide hearted it was a it was a civilization whose basis was humanity whose basis was diversity whose basis was respecting local traditions whose basis was respecting that every people is different but every every person is different but every person has a right to express themselves every person has a right to exist in a society in their own niche and that beautiful vision was not some magic thought or not some folk tale it existed in reality in india in cambodia and all the lands in between in afghanistan it, it that thing existed it unfortunately does not exist now and the debris of invaders and the debris of you know the destruction that has happened uh, in the past probably 1000 uh, years has kind of covered that beautiful bedrock that we had once access to yeah i was about and to our come job, to that mm -hmm. yeah i was and, about and, to come and, to and, that and our job as authors yeah yeah please Yeah, I was about to come to this. Like uh, you talk about in a very subtle way, the colonial narratives that have you know built since uh, decades. If you can just talk to us a little bit about how do you challenge those narratives? Again, it's, it's it, as I said, like our our job is to remove that debris of the colonial narrative and find that common bedrock. What has happened? is that uh, when uh, when the colonial historians came they found us in a very degraded form because of you know multiple years of you know fighting against invaders warfare etc etc and they saw that and they saw that and they thought that okay you know these guys are regressing they were once might they, they were great but they are regressing and we have brought civilization to them that is something that has been fed to us year after year after year after year every child starts learning thing that oh there was a dark 
uh, we were once we were great but there was this you know dark age and then uh, people came and we started becoming civilized and started getting, becoming quote unquote modern again unfortunately people don't really talk about why we were why we had a golden age why we were great. like east india company why was it called east india company like wh- why were all of these people from the west from rome whether it is in the roman empire time or you know in the afterwards in the industrial why did they want to reach you know asia and india what which is because we are really wealthy we are really prosperous and we had enormous cultural heritage that through arabs and through other means got transported to uh, to europe got transported to the americas where they uh, what they got inspired uh, uh, and a lot of uh, a, a lot of our cultural uh, history has thus been kind of erased and we were taught that okay you know like you are nothing before shared roots is an attempt to counter that saying that no we we had a particular path and this path is something that once we know we can find strength from it because then people can connect there's a basis for it can right now if you look at india and cambodia and say that okay we must you know uh, there there must be a people to people connect there must be because you know understand like why why do we need that this book tries to explain that that we are not some strangers we are all family we are all part of the same fa- larger family tree and that is what we need to work towards that is what once we have that understanding that strength comes back from there um balu in his book the hidden in his blindness says that uh, you know he, he 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 talks about this that how the the western look at our civilization and our society has become the default way of how we started looking at ourselves and this book is an attempt to kind of come out of that paradigm and look at our own history at look at our own uh, selves on our own terms and that is why we are written it ourselves and the first thing that i wrote in the book in the uh, in, in 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 the introduction is said that this anthology is not an exercise in historical jingoism yeah. we don't want to be jingoistic we don't we, our intent is not to lay claim on any sort of cultural ancestry that is not the point the point is not that okay this was first and this was later no the point is we are all the same we are all part of the same cultural continuity we are all part of the same cultural branch and that is strength that is power and that is what the colonial uh, you know historians never understood about us they looked at our uh, our reality from their lens where they had you know kingdoms fighting against each other and you know the protestant versus catholic wars and, and they, their whole thing was very very different whereas we is like our his thing is you know celebrating diversity coexistence co prosperity everybody has a place in the larger industrial that is our motto and that is what we need to take pride in uh, rajul uh, we know that there is a there was a french colonization in cambodia but do you also and i'm not saying that it's again because it may fall under the bracket of historical jingoism uh, jingoism question to you but i want to ask you do you think that the chinese have influenced the civilizational uh, and the cultural aspect of cambodia yeah so uh, the cambodian buddhism is very different from the chinese buddhism let me first say so the current so from the 13th century onwards the uh, the uh, official cambodian uh, buddhism is theravada buddhism which is based out of sri lanka um in fact it is the other way around um around the 5th century uh, we had monks from cambodia going into china to translate uh, texts like buddhist sutras from sanskritam to chinese so buddhism if you look at its spread uh, as it spread it underwent many transformations so for example mahayana hinayana as it moved further eastward it uh, became vajrayana when it reached china it uh, melted with uh, confucianism and taoist uh, this thing it, it had its own yeah. so it is not correct to say that the chinese brought buddhism to cambodia no the buddhism that came to cambodia initially the mahayana buddhism was from india itself 
and then the larger buddhist uh, change that happened in the 13th century uh, probably by jayavarmana 7 uh, who converted into uh, theravada buddhism it came mainly from sri lanka so the china as a sphere has had its own impact on a cultural space uh, across all uh, countries in the region uh, and that is well documented and in fact a lot of uh, what we uh, know about current uh, Ch- uh, cambodia in the pre angkor periods whether it is funan or whether it is the chenla period we know from chinese sources and they speak that okay the it it was a very very hindu kingdom actually we had one or two uh, uh, mahayana buddhist kings but by and large these were all hindu kingdoms and the the king thought of himself as an avatar of either shiva or vishnu so uh, that that was the cultural makeup of uh, these kingdoms. so yes china has had its influence but like everything else in the indosphere Uh, you know that influence came and then merged with the local uh, local sensibilities and then took its own form um, so buddhism specifically if you look at the cambodian it's actually theravada it is it is not a chinese it, it's not a chinese import so as to speak right but also if you can just you know give us a sense of what is it that the sutradhar you and other book covers because uh, you know i've seen the pattern of the books that you write it it thrives to it strives to actually shatter the you know long narratives which have been there for many many centuries so if you can just talk a little bit about sutradhar as well um, so sutradhar is my first book it's a collection of uh, historical fiction and any book that i write is uh, i write it to be a cultural artifact as in something that uh, should be relevant uh, beyond the immediate one or two years but it should be like if 10 years later somebody picks up they should find something in it and i wrote sutradhar because uh, as i i was sick of how history was taught uh, in india and i said that okay i i i need to talk about uh, our own past in a way that is accessible i did not want to write a non fiction book i wanted to write it in a way that is very very accessible to common people um while talking about while while having uh, what we call the drishti of an indian and drishti is world view is a very small uh, you know subset of what we call drishti it's a part of uh, your larger way of looking at life uh, lot of you know so i wrote it from a p- typically bharatiya drishti and i said that okay maybe something like this does not exist in indian english writing uh, as of that time because uh, i wanted to look at history from a very cultural lens also that okay history happened there are some events which happened but uh, what was the cultural and social impact of that and how can we make something which is how, how how can we make a tale that you know will stay with somebody after reading it saying not just in terms of okay this has happened but also in terms of the emotional and cultural significance of what had happened at that time